Hi, my name is Cliff Weitzman. I'm the CEO of Speechify. I became a US citizen the week that I graduated college. And today we have 85 people who work with us at Speechify. At this point, I've gotten three people O1 visas, one green card, two J1 visas, one TN visa, uh, and helped many, many, many more people move to the United States over time. And so in this video, I'm gonna cover three really important topics. What is it like living in the United States? And why is it so magical? Why I thrive there and why I think it's the best place to live in the world if you fit a certain type of mentality. How do I move to the United States, Cliff? How do I make it happen? How do I visit for the first time? How do I get a J-1 visa or an H-1B visa or a TN visa or a B-1 or B-2 visa or an O-1 visa? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I know these you know, letters and numbers sound crazy and ridiculous right now, but stick around to the end. I'll show you how you can use that system to move to the United States permanently. I really look for and admire growth mindset in people. And one of the very unique and amazing things about the United States is it has a huge density of people like that. But there are folks like this in Canada and the UK and Israel and South Africa and Asia and all over the place. It's just that I find that the density in the United States, especially in the major cities, is higher. Why is that the case? Well, number one, the culture in the United States is such that you give a lot of credibility to young people. So right now I'm living in London and I can already tell that I need to prove myself a little bit more here than I do when I'm, when I'm in the US. In the US, if you open your mouth and you start talking and you say smart things, even without the beard, when I look 14, uh, people still listen. And I don't feel a massive urge to prove myself. As much as I do here, you know, you might get discounted more quickly. There's a real belief both in young people and in old people that young people can change the world. And I think a lot of that way was paved by people like Bill Gates, like Steve Jobs, like Elon Musk, like Mark Zuckerberg, who started the companies that now shape the United States when they were in their 20s. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is the industry in the United States. You know, New York is the financial hub of the world. Hollywood is the media hub of the world. San Francisco is the tech hub of the world. There's so much agriculture that happens in the breadbasket in the middle of the United States. And the United States is the biggest market in the world. If you wanna sell a good, the place that will pay you the most money are the 330 million people who live in the United States who also make a really high income. And so it's much easier to build a business in the United States than other places. You know, when I was a kid, my dad wanted me to learn English because if you speak Hebrew and you write a book, seven million people can read it. If you do it in English, seven billion can. But most importantly, the 330 million in the United States can. So with that also comes a higher cost of living. When we moved to the United States, everything was like two, three times more expensive than it was in Israel. Rent was higher, food was higher, insurance was way higher extracurricular activities were higher. So you needed to be able to have a job to support um, you know, all those expenses. When I moved to the United States, things were very different. Initially moved to LA and uh, I'm the oldest of five kids. And so we were five kids basically locked up in this one you know, condo apartment. We couldn't really go in the street because we moved into a city. After about half a year there, we moved to a suburb outside of San Francisco called Marin County. And Marin was amazing. We had a creek in the backyard. There were deer running through the creek. Uh, we lived in a cul-de-sac, we went to this middle school, we rode our bikes everywhere. Like it was a really classic like suburban experience. From there, I ended up going to university at Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island, very close to Boston, very close to New York. And that was the point at which my life changed. For the first time in my life, I met my people. There's eight Ivy League universities and then, you know, MIT and Stanford. They pick you to come there. There's a selection committee. And people come from all over the US, people come from all over the world. And they're people who are interesting and interested. You see a tremendous amount of ambition, of intellectual curiosity. And I would just go to the dining hall and have three dinners every single night when I was there and just have conversations with strangers who became really close friends of mine over time. Cool, Cliff, how do I move to the United States? Well, there's a couple of things that you should know. The first one is you can come to the United States as a visitor for most countries on what's called a B-1 visa. It's three months where you can come as a visitor. You can easily extend that to a B-2 visa, which gives you six months in the United States. That's the easiest way to start. You wanna to move to LA, book an Airbnb in LA for one week and just show up. Bombs away! And hang out, make friends, message people on Instagram and Facebook and on YouTube and email people and search LinkedIn and just like have as many coffees as you can. How many of those have you had? Oh, I don't know. A million? You have a week, make sure that you're meeting like five people a day for coffee that you don't know and just build a network of friends. But how do you move here in a way legally where you can stay for a long time? The first one is to come in as a student. Apply to go to university here. 
you can apply to one of the fancy private schools or to a public school or to a community college. Like it doesn't have to be a fancy school. It can be a school that has a low tuition and a high acceptance rate and you apply. And if you get in, you get an F1 visa, a student visa, and boom, you can be here for four years, maybe even five. So that's the best way to get into the United States. But obviously, you know, it requires for you to be willing to spend some time studying as opposed to working. And it will not give you a visa to work. It will only give you a visa to study. Once you finish studying for four years, if you studied uh, Bachelor of Arts, you can be on what's called OPT. I think Bachelor of Arts OPT is either six months or 12 months, but Bachelor of Science, if you studied, you know, computer science or engineering or physics, hard science, your OPT can last for, I think, 1.5 to two years, and you can work after the time. It's because the United States wants to encourage people who are educated to be here and work here. All right, student and then OPT is the easiest way to go. What are other ways? You can get what's called an H-1B visa. Let's say you wanna work for Speechify and you wanna work for Speechify while being in the United States. By the way, you can work for Speechify and live in you know, Hong Kong or Dubai or London, whatever you want from your home country. You say, hey Cliff, I wanna work for Speechify. And I go, well, what do you, what do you got? Are you, are you good? Oh, you're really good, okay. Let's hire you. Let's apply for an H-1B visa. H-1B visa. Costs a couple of thousand dollars. It's usually sponsored by your employer. And we will initially submit to the government uh, a bunch of forms about you that shows that you have a college degree, that you have you know, the relevant skills, and then if the government goes, yeah, this person seems like he would be a good fit for this job, and he seems very educated, we want him here, then there is a lottery, and you have a 30% chance of winning the lottery. And if you win the lottery, welcome to America, baby. You can come move to the United States, and you know, you're good for many years, and if you want to transfer from Speechify to another company, you can do that too, but you know, it's not a permanent visa. It's for a couple of years. Second one even more easy, is what's called a J-1 visa. Let's say you're a student in school or you recently graduated this school in the last three years. You can get a J-1 visa, which is an internship visa. And that allows you to move to the United States, work in the United States for up to two years, I believe. And once, I promise you, once you're here for a year or two, you'll find ways of staying for longer. A J-1 visa you can apply for yourself if you want, or your employer can apply for you. It's also a couple of thousand dollars. When I say a couple, I mean like two, three, four thousand dollars. You can apply by yourself or you can apply with a lawyer. You can also get a J-1 visa as an au pair like as a nanny to go and live in someone's house. And it's like very easy to do. If you just want to come live in the United States and you want to you know, take care of kids, that's a very easy way of doing it. And you can do that for a couple of years. I have a bunch of friends who did this. Um, so let's just back up. B1, B2 visa for a visitor. F1 visa for a student. OPT after you've been a student for about uh, four years. J1 vis visa as an intern working in tech or um, as an au pair. H1B visa if you come to work as an employee. And then the more, most exciting one for me is called an O1 visa. O-1 visas are what's called alien of exceptional ability. When we say alien, we mean someone who is not a resident of the United States. They're so skilled that the United States will go out of its way to make sure that they come here. You know, sometimes they give O-1 visas to Olympic athletes, to pop stars, to actors. Albert Einstein got an O-1 visa, but you can also get an O-1 visa just for being really good in your industry. There's about eight different categories you have to prove. You know, you've published some original research or you've had a lot of media coverage or you're like paid an exorbitant amount or you, you know, are clearly a leader in your industry because you go and give talks, etc. So at Speechify, we have two and now we're in the process for a third O-1 visa. And once you get an O-1 visa, it becomes very easy. So let's say you get an O-1 visa. After a couple of years, you can apply for EB-1 or EB-2, which transition your O-1 visa into a green card. So a green card is what at the end of the day you really want. A green card is a path to citizenship. You have a green card for five years, and after five years, you become a U.S. citizen. And that's it, you have a U.S. passport. I think that having a U.S. passport is the equivalent in terms of value of being worth millions of dollars because it's such an amazing passport to have. It's such an amazing country to be able to live in. It, it just makes you very safe, it makes you very secure, and it gives you access to what I think is one of the highest quality of living that exists in the world. Cool, green card is what you want at the end of the day. An O-1 visa is a very easy, not easy, but one path of getting a, a green card. I think there's about five other ways of getting a green card. One is you can make a, I think it was a $500,000 investment in the United States, and you can get uh, immigration status that leads to a green card. Uh, another one is you can marry someone here, and you can come here as a spouse if they also have a US citizenship. The next one is a lottery. Believe it or not, there's this thing called the green card lottery, and you can search on the internet green card lottery, and you should apply. And there's a small chance you win, but if you win, that's it, you get a green card. Like you've hopped over the entire thing, and it's because the United States wants to support diversity and it wants to make sure that we have people from all over the world who come here. Um, there's different amounts of allocations for different countries based on how many of those types of people already live in the United States and what's the population of the country. But search green card lottery, apply, there's a chance you win. Every year you should reapply. Let's say you want to work for Speechify and you want to move to the United States, what should you do? Well, the first thing you should do is download the Speechify app, download the Speechify Chrome extension, 
use them. Take a video of how you use them, find the bugs and report them to the head of product. Then come up with how to improve the wording on the website. If you are a developer, you know, build like a companion app, whatever. More importantly though, message Simon, Simon at speechify.com who leads uh, hiring and tell them, hey, I wanna work for Speechify, here's my resume. What do I need to do in order to work for Speechify? You know, we had a guy who did this with me years ago and he wasn't good enough yet. And I said, but I can see your passion. Look, you are not at the level that we need to be, but here's two courses on how to do iOS development. Take them and like build a project of this scope and reach back out to them when you do. Well, six months later he did and he was really good and we hired him. Be that person, you know, Find the five companies you're most excited about. And I'm serious, like this is not a joke. Write it down right now after the video. What are the five companies you most wanna work for? What's the email of the CEO? What's the email of the head of marketing? What's the email of like the other three top executives in the company? Send an email to every single one. Tell them why you like the company. Give them three sentences about why you are awesome and three sentences about why you think they are awesome. And then ask them to get on a Zoom call. And most likely, you won't get it the first try. But send another email, another email. And finally, I swear, I promise, they'll respond and you'll get on a Zoom call. And that's how you proceed and progress in life. Build relationships, start there, and add value to people. You know, when you send an email, just ask them, how can I save you three hours this week? And it's, by the way, hard to come up with an answer to that question. So make it easier for them. What are your top two goals right now that you wish you could be spending time on that you don't have time for? You go be the person that contributes to those. If you start adding value to people who run businesses, they'll want, to work, they'll want you to work with them full time, and they'll go out there the way to hire you, and they'll even file for immigration for you, by the way, if the company doesn't have immigration as a discipline yet, and they say, oh, sorry, we don't do h one visas, you are the one who owns your immigration process, not your lawyer, not your potential employer. It's you. You tell the lawyer what to do. You tell your employer what to do. You read the final documentation and make sure that they're good when they get submitted because you are the one who, in the end of the day, really cares that they get approved. Take ownership. Anyway, if you want to work for Speechify, email simon at speechify.com. Ideally, you're an engineer or a designer or someone who's really into growth. Find ways of adding value. Click the link below to download the iOS app. Click the link below to download the Chrome extension. Like and subscribe. If you have a friend who wants to move to the United States, share this video with your friend. And as always, happy listening.